everyone, we are back with the latest Azignas for you and here they are. It's Timor opposition wins most votes in parliamentary election. The party of East Timor independence hero Shanana Guzman has won most votes in a parliamentary election. Preliminary results in state media showed on Tuesday, boosting his chances of his return as premier and a new phase of opposition rule. Guzman's National Congress for Timorese Reconstruction, CNRT, won about 42% of ballots cast, with 100% of votes counted, according to election commission data carried by broadcaster Radio Televisão Timor-Leste. The Revolution Front for an Independent Timor-Leste, Fritlin, the party of Prime Minister José María Vasconcelos, popularly known as Taur Matanruak, was second with about 26% of the votes, with the rest split among 15 parties. Sunday's contest was the fifth parliamentary election since East Timor, also known as Timor-Leste, a country with 1.3 million people that gained full independence in 2002 after a quarter-century rule by neighboring Indonesia. The election has been billed as a battle of two former resistance figures, CNRT Guzman, 76, and Fretilin's Marie Alcatiri, 73, with Guzman seen by analysts as the favorite. Heavily dependent on its fast depleting oil reserves for revenue, the Half Island nation faces challenge with poverty and diversifying its economy, which at 3.6 billion is one of Asia's smallest. The election followed last year's victory in a presidential ballot for independence leader and Nobel laureate Jose Ramos Horta, also of the CNRT party. Guzman, a former guerrilla leader, was Timor's first president and served as prime minister from 2007 until his resignation from the post in 2015. Brunei Jerusalem ready to support Timor-Leste accession to ASEAN. The ambassador of Brunei Darussalam in Timor-Leste, Juan Abdul Lafit, manifested it after meeting with Timor-Leste Chamber of Commerce Industries president and the team. Juan added, Brunei has always supported Timor-Leste joining ASEAN and considered as an ASEAN family. Uh, it's uh, mostly exchange of uh, exchange of uh, views and ideas. Uh, 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 we explain uh, Brunei Darussalam support to Timor Leste accession uh, to ASEAN. Uh, we opened our mission in 2015. As soon as we hear, as as soon as uh, uh, there's a request from uh, Timor Leste to join uh, ASEAN uh, back in 2011, we it shows our commitment uh, to support Timor Leste. Because we always think that Timor Leste is uh, uh, fa is in the ASEAN family. The actual member states of ASEAN are Brunei, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, the Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam. Joko Widodo meets Ukrainian President at G7 summit. Okay, nice to see you. Okay. Indonesian President Joko Widodo met Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky on the sidelines of the Group 7 summit in Japan. Widodo made a visit to Ukraine in support of peace efforts last year and invited Zelensky to attend the G20 summit, which was attended by Zelensky virtually. I continue to follow the developments of uh, situation in Ukraine. My deepest uh, condolences for the victims uh, of the ongoing uh, conflict. And I would like to hear directly from Your Excellency about the latest situation in Ukraine. Zelensky got a warm welcome in meetings with Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, France's President Emmanuel Macron, and Britain's Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, and others. I uh, remember your your visit to Ukraine. You've been one of the first been in Ukraine mm -hmm. during such tough periods. This, you know, first months of the yeah. war, they've been very difficult for us. So thank you very much. We'll never forget it. And thanks for the support. And of course, your invitation to G20, where I had possibility from Ukraine represent, represent the, our peace formula. But I remember that it was too long. The Ukrainian president's surprise attendance at the G7 summit in Hiroshima, the first city to suffer a nuclear attack, also highlighted Western concerns over the nuclear threat posed by Moscow. Opposition leader says Cambodia's facade of democracy has collapsed. 
prominent Cambodian opposition figure Samurai Z denounced the country's election in July as a farce after the sole opposition party was disqualified and derided long ruling Prime Minister Hun Sen's plan for his son to succeed him in power. Now, even the facade of democracy has collapsed uh, in Cambodia. So it is a, a joke no? to refer Cambodia as a democracy. I think uh, we should call a cat a cat. Cambodia is an autocracy. And worse, uh, an autocracy with a political dynasty founded by Mr. Hun Sen. Renzi said the decision by Cambodia's election commission to disqualify the candidate party for what it said was a failure to submit proper registration documents meant the July polls would be a fake and a sham election. Candlelight Party is a reincarnation of the former popular opposition party, the Cambodian National Rescue Party, CNRP, which Renzi co-founded but was disbanded by the Supreme Court in 2017. Thailand Alliance signed a striving agreement to draft a new constitution. An alliance led by Thailand's Progressive Move Forward Party signed an ambitious agreement to draft a new constitution and monopolies and allow same-sex marriage, among other aims, but made no mention of a divisive royal insult law. Move Forward's leader Peter Lim Jaroran said the pact was about shared values and commonalities and shared agenda and accountability. All parties agree that every mission that the government will do must not affect the country's status as a unitary state. The country's status as a democracy under a constitutional monarchy framework and the invaluable status of the monarch. All parties agree to work together on the following government tasks. The opposition moved forward and Pudu Thai parties dominated last week's election in the resounding defeat of conservative parties backed by a royalist military that has controlled government since a 2014 coup. They are seeking to form a coalition government with six other parties, of all which signed the agreement on their objectives. Move Forward was the surprise election winner, emerging with the most parliament seats with the help of young voters excited by an agenda that puts the party at odds with some conservative big businesses' interests and institutions, including a plan to amend a less majest law that punishes perceived insults of the monarchy with long jail sentences. His alliance comprises 313 seats, but it needs backing from the 376 legislators to vote PETA in. He will likely need to win over some of the 215 members of the conservative-leaning Senate, which was appointed by a junta and has often sided with the army-backed parties. Iranian president visit Indonesia to boost economic ties. The leaders of Indonesia and Iran signed a preferential trade agreement to expand economic relations during an unofficial visit by Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi. Hari ini Indonesia dan Iran. The Indonesia and Iran have signed a preferential trade agreement (PTA). We hope that it will increase trade between Indonesia and Iran. President Raisi and I also talked about the creation of the B2B agreement and also development of investment in the Nusantara capital and solution to oil and gas sector investment. Sector Migas. Raisi's visit comes as ties between the Islamic Republic and the West become increasingly strained following Iranian security forces' violent crackdown on protest against the clerical elite after the death of Kurdish women in the custody of the morality police last September. Massive fire engulfs Manila Central Post Office building. According to the Philippines Capital's Fire Bureau, the Manila Central Post Office building was badly damaged after a massive fire hit the historical building. Local media informed the place was escalated to the highest level of alarm at 5.54 a.m. on Monday, May 22nd, and brought under control by dozens of firefighters by 7.22 a.m. Located at the bank of Pasig River, the national landmark was rebuilt in 1946 after it was badly damaged by the Battle of Manila during the Second World War in 1945. 
Well, that's the end for today. Thank you very much. Have a nice weekend.